I now humbly request Padma Bhushan Dr. B.M. Hegde to occupy his seat on stage. Sir will speak to us on the topic Ancient Wisdom and Modern Science. He is an Indian medical scientist, educationist and author. He was the Vice Chancellor of the Manipal University and the head of Manglo chapter of Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan. He has authored several books apart from publishing several medical research papers. He is also the editor-in-chief of Medical Journal, Journal of Science of Healing Outcomes. He, is, he has been honored with the Padma, Padma Bhushan. He continues sharing his learning as visiting faculty at many universities, both in India and abroad. Over to you, sir. Can you hear me at the back? Am I audible at the back? Now, what is this audience? You are not B. Ed. students like yesterday. You are teachers all. Is that right? Oh, good, good. Oh, my God. I am honored. Oh, lecturers, my God. I, I was afraid of my lecturers. Okay. Swami uh, Lagalera Lijjarata. Friends, shall we call friends? Because we are in the same business. Did you know that? No. Teaching business. Not cheating business. Because why do I use this word business? If when you are traveling, your neighbor will ask, what, is, what's your, what's, what are you doing? If you say, I am a teacher, he will not look at you afterwards. But if you say, I am in business, he will immediately pull out a card. Here is my business card. What are you doing in the evening in Bombay? Nothing. Why don't you come and join me? We'll have a drink and you know, we'll discuss various things about business. Then also you escape. But supposing you really go there and then say, I don't drink alcohol, I'll drink uh, some water. Then he'll say, what business are you in? Then you're stuck. Being a teacher, you can't tell a lie, right? You take the oath. I will never tell a lie. Right? So what do you do? You say, I'm in brain sharpening business. Now, how do you define a teacher? Who is a good teacher? Yes, ma? A constant learner. Oh, oh, good, good, good. Who is a good teacher? Who is a good teacher? I am, I'm sure all of you are good teachers, so you must know who is a good teacher. Who inspires? Big word. We get all this all the time. Inspiration. Where does it come from? From perspiration. <laughs> a good teacher is one who makes the student want to learn the subject. Did you understand? A good teacher is one who makes the student want to learn that subject. Not telling everything that you know, because you can't tell nobody anything that he does not know already. How do you do that? You are like the menu in the restaurant. When you go to the restaurant, what do you see first? Menu card. And the menu card, if it is very good, then you want to eat all that is the menu card. Like that, when a student comes to the college or school, it's a teacher who should be a very good menu. If this is my teacher, I want to study this subject. Make the subject so interesting. But most of us make the subject so dull, I tell you. Because we tell him all that we know. If somebody said, if you took a subject to a specialist, he will complicate it so much that nobody understands it. But it takes a genius to go in the reverse direction to simplify it without losing the essence of it. So a teacher evolves. And a teacher evolves from the day he or she becomes a teacher till the day he or she is taken to the crematorium. Every day, a good teacher should be a good student. Do you know why? Half of what you know today will have been proved wrong in another five years' time. But most of us, the problem is we don't know which half it is. That's the problem. I'll give you an example now. We talk about... Swamiji wanted me to... What about her? Swamiji, where are you? Swamiji wanted me to speak about ancient wisdom and modern science. See what words? What is this ancient and modern? 
Do you know what your concept of modern is? Modern means it must come from America or from England. Swamiji, you said ancient wisdom and modern science, right? You said ancient wisdom and modern science. I am telling the teachers, I am trying to, you know. What is this ancient, modern? Ancient means all Indian. No good. Modern is Western. It's come from the West. Do you know why this concept is there? 300 years of slaves, colonial slaves. We think everything from the West is good. You are laughing. But I am sure 90% of your children are going to English medium schools. Or 100, right? But the modern science says the child should be taught in the mother tongue. Not in English language. You think English language is a great language? No, 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 no. You probably don't know. The oldest language is Sanskrit. Second is German. Do you know which is the third? Third? Kannada. Kannada is the third oldest language in the world. There was a huge conference on language, languages and linguistics in Delhi. I happened to be in that place, same place staying, so I just, they forced me to go there. And then I found this for the first time. Germans talking about Kannada and saying that after German language came Kannada language. And all, no Tamilians here, no? All South Indian languages emanated from Kannada. And our mother tongue, Tulu, is more ancient than even Sanskrit. It comes from Prakrit. Tulu and Malayalam, they have a part of Prakrit. And Tulu has a script also. Only thing is, it's just lost. No, that's not important. What I'm trying to say is, you think these are all old? Kannada medium shali gyar folk there. Yaar Do you know what I suggested to them? All IAS officers and all politicians must have their children in Kannada school. So that the Kannada schools at least become better schools. On the contrary, what happens is Kannada schools are so bad, there are no teachers. No, eh? So there are no teachers. So, friends, modern is in reference to our ancient things. For anything to look forwards, you must be able to look backwards. In Latin, there is a nice saying, respice to prospice. If you want to look forwards, you must look backwards. Supposing I want to throw a ball from here, I throw it like that, it will only go up that. If I take the ball back and throw it, it will go to the back. So you must look back. So modernity in every society must be evolving from its ancient past. Now let us start with our ancient past. Our ancestors said, you are here for others. Is that right? Paropakarartam idam shariram. Now do you know how you came here? You didn't come from England. Where did you come from? Any idea? You know, you are taught biology, physics and chemistry. Western biology, Western physics and Western chemistry, which are dead sciences. You are born with the Big Bang. Is that right? There has never been a Big Bang. The truth is, Big Bang is the biggest myth. It was not even a whimper. Forget about the bang. Then you are told, thermodynamics. Right? Right? I will give you a small example. You take liquid helium. Any chemist here? Physics is here? Yes. Lot of you. Put it in a bowl. And hang it on top. After two days, the helium will rise up, go up, and then come on the sides. Where is thermodynamics? See? But the real science is the living science. This is now, West also has woken up to that. It's called, what's that science called? Evolutionary biology. What's the science name? Evolutionary biology. Difficult to find out if you don't know, but I'll give you a reference. There's a girl, not a girl, old lady, called Elizabeth Sartoris. She's not Elizabeth, like what you read right here, E-L-I-Z-E-B-T-H, no. She's Elizabeth, E-L-I-S-E-B-T. She's a Spanish girl. Sahotis, S-A-H-T-O-U-R-I-S. 
She has written extensively. She is one of the leading evolutionary biologists. This earth started 4 billion years ago as a living earth, breathing earth, not a dead earth. Organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry. You have developed from carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen and trace minerals. And you will become carbon, hydrogen, trace minerals when you die. No, no. Do you know our ancient wisdom? Atma does not die. The soul does not die. Today, you see today's science journal from Southampton University, researchers have found out that the consciousness, which is otherwise called the human mind, does not die with the body dying. Just this morning it is published. And this is the interesting story. Where is now modernity? We have come from the ancient part that is Atma does not leave and Atma does not leave. The researchers have been able to follow up the mind for about 4 to 8 hours that the patient was there after death. But they don't know how long it lasts. We have to do more research. So our modernity, the modernity in India should emanate from the ancient scriptures of India. Because India is a great country. India is a country where all wisdom existed. Even Westerners now don't question our wisdom. They say we have no right to question their authenticity or their antiquity. This was told by Voltaire. I was telling the B.Ed. students yesterday. But what is interesting here is, now look at this Sanatana Dharma saying, Paropakar Artham Idam Shariram. Now 4 billion, 4,000 billion years ago when the world started, for 2,000 billion years ago, this world lived on germs only. The occupants were germs. And what did these germs do? They were also like us. What do we do now? We are jealous of each other, fight and want to come up and I want to eat more and I want... So many people are not eating. You couldn't care less. You eat, you are happy. You are inside your house. This doesn't happen that way. These germs ate up everything in the world that they had nothing to eat. Millions of years. Then they were dying. What did they do? What did they do? Any idea? Huh? They mutated. They mutated and started living on. One of the biggest laboratories ever built in the world was built by them. More than 2000 billion years ago. What was that laboratory? The green leaf. Chlorophyll. Can you make chlorophyll today in your laboratory? In any western laboratory? You can't. But these germs took three things. The water vapor, carbon dioxide and then sun. Fused it into. So they made green leaf, which was a source of all energy. Even today it's a source of all energy. They again became competitive. They started eating the. They ate everything. And then the byproduct of producing chlorophyll is, is, is oxygen. Good, good. See, see, he's not a teacher, but he's a great uh, brain. The oxygen was so much in the atmosphere that these germs started dying because of oxygen. 